My name is Dave Pauly. I'm the principal scientist at Fluence, and I want to take a minute to just talk a little bit about far red light. What is it? How you use it? Uh, and in the context of where we are today, how we continue to research far red in the context of cannabis production. Right off, why don't we just start by saying what is far red? Generally, when we talk about far red, we're talking about wavelengths in the 700 nanometer to 800 nanometer range. So that's just outside the range of visible light. That's typically like 400 to 700 nanometer. Broadly speaking, far red light makes plants think that they're in the shade. So when a plant's in the shade, it's thinking to itself, I'm not getting enough good quality light and I need to expand and stretch out to get to where the light is better. As you can imagine, this informs kind of the strongest impact that far red has on plants. It stretches things out and we can use that. It's a really, really good tool for crop steering. Given the right circumstances, far red can be a useful tool for enhancing photosynthesis. And in the case of cannabis, we have seen some cultivar dependent situations where the red and far red light ratio can significantly alter secondary metabolite profile, giving us more of certain terpenes, less of certain terpenes, and so on. Brian Poole here at Texas Original, one of Texas' few licensed medical cannabis producers. And I'm here to talk about some of the experiences that we've had here doing research on far red with Fluence. One of the first experiments we did was way back in 2020 where we looked at including far red as part of the spectrum that we delivered to the cannabis plants during the flower phase. And essentially what we saw was that far red when added to par did increase yield, but it didn't increase yield any more so than just adding more par light itself. So the next experiments we were looking at was trying to use far red to manipulate flowering. We wanted to see, is there any way that we can use far red to kind of promote flowering and counteract something like delivering a long day. So if we deliver a photo period longer than 12 hours, can we use far red to counteract that and reduce our time to flower? And what we saw was even under the 14 hour control with no far red, we did continue to see some flowering. So there's some evidence there that a strict 12-12 hourly schedule is not necessarily needed for cannabis production. So it could be something maybe a little bit longer than 12 hours is suitable for a photo period in the flower phase. One of the last experiments we looked at most recently with far red was trying to understand what does far red do in an outdoor natural environment and is there any benefit to trying to mimic that indoors? If you look at the far red environment, as the sun sets, you're starting to see a reduction in par light, but you're seeing a relative increase in far red. As the sun gets low on the horizon, you're getting more transmission through plant canopies in the atmosphere, and that more or less increases relatively the amount of far red that's getting to a plant canopy. So if that's what's happening in a natural environment, we tried to mimic that inside a grow room where we had our par light ramp up and ramp down over the first and last hours of the photo period, and then at the end of the day, that last hour before the lights would completely turn off, we delivered different amounts of far red light. And again, compared to that no far red control, we didn't see any difference in yield or flower development time with the different amounts of far red. As the dosage of far red increased at the end of the day, we saw increased plant height, the shade avoidance response that we're very familiar with in cannabis. But when it came to things like flower development and yield, we didn't see any benefit to far red light or mimicking that outdoor sunset environment. So we'll talk a little bit about what we've seen in Fluence's research uh, as it pertains to far red applications in different crops. In the case of primary vine crops like tomato and like cucumber, uh, far red is a really good tool for steering the crop. Specifically, if you have a need to expand the vine in particular, uh, a bit of far red can go a long way. In the case of strawberry, what we've seen is that, uh, particularly in June bearing cultivars, if you apply far red through the winter season, you can have a much better canopy architecture. In the case of strawberry, that means a more expanded canopy uh, with larger leaves. So lastly, I think I'll mention a little bit about what we've seen in cannabis. It doesn't seem to offer a whole lot of value to improving cannabis production, whether that's in terms of canopy architecture, whether that's in terms of bud quality or yield. I think there's still potential and we're continuing to explore uh, a few different things, including the study that we have going on right here. It's an area of opportunity and, and more exploration, but if I were a cannabis grower right now, 
uh, I probably wouldn't deploy far red on my crop unless I had a very specific reason to do so. So the way that we do these research projects, we look to the voice of the customer, we look across to other crops and other research, and understand what are people asking for, and deep down, what aspect of a certain spectrum, what's the outcome that they're trying to achieve? And so we'll take those thoughts, we'll take that other research, and we'll create experiments that we can deploy here in a controlled environment to really understand, okay, what aspect of something like far red, what aspect of that is leading to an outcome, whether it's morphological, whether it's reduced time to flower, or something increasing yield, looking at that and understanding what aspect of the spectrum is leading to that outcome. So we're not just creating research projects through our own internal discussions, we're looking to the voice of the customer and understanding what are they asking for and why are they asking for it, and trying to test those things in a controlled environment so that if we do ultimately create a product, we understand what it's doing and how growers should be using it.